Hello and welcome to PMSLounge.com and trust me there is a reason why you see a fish on your screen right now. Today we are talking about generating insights and this is a step that you take when you are running retrospective meetings. Now if you are into reading articles, if you would rather read about this topic than watch a video, then check out the first link in the description that is going to take you to a relevant article on this topic over at our official website pmclounge.com. But if you are into watching videos, then continue watching. Also, I'd like to call out the second link in the description, which is a playlist of all the videos that we have done so far on agile so that playlist is going to help you out if you're preparing for your pmp exam the agile part of your pmp exam will be covered if you check out that playlist or if you're also preparing for some other agile related certifications like pmi acp or csm then also that playlist is going to be super helpful all right let's move on and understand why do we see a fish here so like I said, generating insights is basically a step in retrospective meetings. And this is the third step. We've earlier talked about two steps that come before generating insights and those are setting the stage and gathering data. Generating insights is something that you do when you already have the data and now you want to generate some insights from the data that you have gathered. So we have done videos on these two topics as well. Check out the third and fourth link in the description to understand what setting the stage is and what gathering the data uh, step is and what are the tools that you can use to perform those two steps. But the tools that you can use to perform the generating insights steps are fishbone diagram and that is the reason why you saw a fish and prioritize the dots. Now I must mention that we have already talked about fishbone diagram in the past in quite a bit of detail. So if you want to watch that video check out the uh, next link. I forgot the numbering of the links by now but you will find a link to the direct video on the fishbone diagram in the description but don't go away just yet we will also cover this topic in this video uh, in a nutshell so that uh, you know you don't have to jump around watching different videos and not get anything out of this one so let's talk about fishbone diagram to begin with so there are some other names of uh, this concept cause and effect diagram ishikawa diagram and herringbone diagram all of these uh, represent the same topic which is the fishbone diagram fishbone because this whole thing looks like a fishbone as you can see on your screen right now ishikawa because the person who came up with this concept was named ishikawa now what's exactly happening here in this figure is that it is how fishbone diagram works so you use this tool to figure out what caused a defect and you do so by listing all categories of defects that you and your team have identified so far so these are the categories that you see here measurement materials personal environment methods machines these are all the categories now that you have identified all these categories what you're going to do is you're going to write the possible causes of the defect that you're analyzing. So within measurement, there could be different causes, right? It could be a calibration issue. It could be microscopes. It could be inspectors within materials. The different causes could be alloys, lubricants, suppliers within personnel. You have uh, shifts, trainings, operators. These are the possible causes that you see within the categories right so this is something that you're analyzing uh, by category now fishbone helps you see all the possible causes which you can see here we have listed down all the possible causes in one place and this will help you figure out how to prevent a defect in the future so you if you're going to be taking care of all these different categories and then uh, the different causes that you have listed here it will help you make sure you do not get defects like these in the future if you're acting on all the causes and 
all the categories that you have identified right so that is how fishbone diagram is used you have the data that you have gathered in the second step of retrospective now it's just a matter of putting all that data into a fishbone diagram so that your retrospective can be fruitful now there's another uh, tool here that can be used when you have your data with you uh, which is called prioritize the dots this is also known as dot voting and this is pretty simple this is like a democratic way of deciding what the team should focus uh, their energy on right so each team member is going to get 10 dots to stick on the issues that they want the team to address first now remember when you use the fishbone diagram you already have a list of issues with you now your team members have 10 dots and they can stick those dots uh, whichever uh, issue is going to get the most number of dots that is something which will be picked up by the teams this is what it looks like and as you can see issue a and d have five dots each so one of these can be picked up by the team uh, to address first so this is the second tool in uh, this step of retrospective meeting where you are basically generating insights and you are deciding which issue to tackle first question for this video there are some other tools as well that the teams use to gather insight now have you used any other tool let me know in the comments definitely looking forward to your answers so that's all that we had in this video i hope you were able to understand what exactly are the tools that you use when you are in the gathering insights step within your retrospective meetings like share subscribe if you like our work consider contributing by using the thanks button or heading over to pnclounge.com contribute i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye